The idea was for me to take photographs of her and the band for the album. Um, but we would see where, where it went, and I, it, so it went from there. I'd gone back to Afghanistan since I met her and filmed some footage for a multimedia film during Afghanistan. And so with that little bit of experience, they thought they could give me the chance to you know, make a film or two and see how it went. I listened to that for about a year before we did anything. And so I was very familiar with the material, but um, when it came time to the films, I came up with the idea that rather than do something very obvious like just go to war, or go to Afghanistan, or go to somewhere that would be very you know, connected with war, um, I would focus on England because the, apart from the, the, the title of the album, I thought for me, being an Irish person, I, I actually live in England, um, it's a very English record, it's a very English sound, the lyrics, the subject matter, it's very English, and um, I thought England, I thought um, to do a road trip around England would be a novel thing to do, and I think it would give me a big uh, area to, to do what I do, which is documentary photography. So apart from the Punch and Judy sequences and the guys giving the, the lyrics, everything else is just what I found, I wasn't setting anything up. Um, so it's that thing of just capturing things. I thought if I did a road trip around England, um, things would happen. Okay, from 2005, I've been doing a project on America, a road trip around America, which is still pictures. And I, I was just saying to somebody the other night that actually I would never have taken on this idea of an English road trip had I not, been, had I not done the American work. Because American work was a big change for me. I normally would cover international conflicts, or not conflicts so only, but just international subjects. And I would travel to work. Um, and America, although it was traveling, was kind of like home because it was a similar culture to what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. Before that, I was used to going to countries where they, I, they didn't understand my language and I didn't understand theirs. So you can actually be very uh, obnoxious in a way and, and <laughs> do things that, if you don't understand what people are saying, you get away with it personally. You know, you don't feel that you're intruding. Mm -hmm. So when I took on America, that was my first fear that if I start hearing people saying, what the hell is that guy doing with the camera? Yeah. It might, I might be shy, but anyway, I managed to deal with it. And um, that then became a body of work. And then I learned a lot from that experience. The experience was that you have to give yourself enough time and you have to wait for things to happen. And if you let things happen, they will happen. But it's also time and also being ready to capture it. And they're the two things you've got to be aware of if you take on this as the way to work. Mm -hmm. It was the trip to Afghanistan where I had to shoot on the, on the camera that I got used to using it. Um, had I gone straight into doing this, it would have been a real, you know, I would have made a mess of it. But, but you know, I had done six weeks in Afghanistan, and by that stage, I kind of knew the video side of that camera and you know what would work and what didn't work. But it's a constant learning process, isn't it? I mean, you're you know constantly learning. I would shoot things differently, you know, at, at the end than I did at the beginning of this this project. But that's just you know, that's just the way it goes. Uh, I've, you know, a lot of people have said to me, like, she's a unique person to work with as an artist. She's, she's very, um, uh, incredible imagination. Um, you know, I, I've, I've done photo shoots with her when I, when I show her the pictures and I give her all the pictures I shot and she can choose what she thinks would be the ones. And I'm always amazed that she's so not worrying about her image. I mean, her, you know, it's often the most unflattering pictures that she chooses, but they're actually the better pictures. Now, usually, when you, when you deal with anyone, any of us, we will check the, the, the one that looked where we look good. That's what we'll go for. So she's very interesting in that way. Um, and I had total freedom on this. I mean, it was I, I went off and I basically went off and did it and came back and edited with the guy in Berlin, worked very closely with him, and showed her and the record company the first cut. Very few changes. So um, fantastic to work with. And and then you know the the music is just so extraordinary, and I. I, I loved the record as soon as I heard it. So, and I'm, you know, I'm still enjoying it now. It's extraordinary after you know two years of working quite closely with that music. It's still fresh for me. So that was great. I mean, I couldn't imagine working with music that I didn't like. There, there were certain things that I had in mind. Uh, the, the ballroom dancing scene, funny enough, I, I'd actually thought about that because the lyrics are so heavy, you know, and, and about, uh, explosions and limbs and trees. And then if you listen to the music, it's happy, happy in this clapping, and you know, it, it's, it's very different. I, I thought perhaps the way to do that would be to counterpoint that heavy lyric, mm -hmm. but always go with the sound, with the, with, the, with the melody, rather than the lyric. I never listen, I, the lyrics were important, but I really was guided by the, the sound and the, the rhythm and the melody. So if it was a happy sound, it, it made sense to use something that was, um, you, know, com you know, comparable to that. So, um, not so slavish, and um, 
And her thing, I mean, the first time I met PJ, she, she was saying, um, we were talking about what, you know, what would work, what, what, what wouldn't work, and she said, just avoid the bleeding obvious, which is kind of what I do anyway, and, and, and that was perfect. It was like, okay, avoid the obvious. So, you know, it would always be, if it was, if it was opposite, it would work. Yeah. If it was like it, it would have to be very good to, to get in, and that's, that was the sort of credo. It was a thought that I had to get somebody actually to sing the, 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 the songs, to have a little intro of someone singing a song and then go into it. And then I thought, actually, that'll be very... I, I tried it once, it was very, very difficult. And then I thought, actually, reciting the lyrics is such, a, it's such an odd thing. Because, you know, lyrics are great when you hear them being sung. When you hear them spoken or if you read them, they're often very odd on their own. And uh, I thought that would draw attention to the actual lyrics. And I thought the lyrics were very important in the, in the record. So if you had somebody doing this um, and, and actually listen to the lyrics, then when the music came on, you'd actually listen to the lyrics. So you'd know what, what was being said. So that was a good thing. It was like underlining the lyrics. You remember that Bob Dylan, back in the 60s, there was a thing where he stands there, he throws the, yeah, I mean, I, I thought about this afterwards, but I thought, oh, that's the same, the same way that they did that, which was kind of good. Um, and. The people that I, I used were, some of them I knew, I, I, I knew them all, um, and they were just a range of characters. I thought, these are people you, you would meet on the road in England. So there was very minimal um, technical stuff. And um, give them time, you know. It's, I was amazing, the, the, the band sort of doing their little, their little thing at the end, that was one take. I mean, the, I, mean I didn't do it five times. And, yeah, there was one take before that where a car came, because it was actually in the middle of the road in front of this pub, and um, we had to stop. But beyond that, it was like one take, and I mean, all that, that was all improvised. Yeah. It worked out very well in the end, but we had a real disaster, and I had a fight with the editor, didn't speak for a day, because um, he was taking it down one way, which, he had a logic and a narrative that he was following, and I, anyway, it didn't work out, I didn't think, didn't think it worked out, and, um, God, which one was it? It was the one, um, um, in the dark places. And then we changed the beginning where um, there's a shot on Edgware Road in London where people are just walking down the street, with someone, someone's running and then someone runs across. That's all actually one take, it's not bits. And um, once we got that in place, then it followed. But, but we really, it was, there was one picture I had of a woman on a canal barge having a cigarette looking very contemplative. And we had that and that just threw us off course. We lost a whole, we lost two days because we put that shot in and we followed that. And it was just the, the wrong, the wrong mood and everything. And um, once we took her out, it worked. So that, that was a track that gave us the most problems. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of actually trying to do something with multimedia, that dreadful word, um, with the stills for the screen. So it would be still pictures um, and audio, probably, not video. Um, that was the other thing about this whole project. When I, when I took it on, the road trip was going to be stills, pictures, and the odd bit of video. That was how I conceived it. That's how I sort of sold it to the, them and the record company. And they said, yeah, fine, that sounds good. And then when I came back to the editor uh, to do the first few films, I realized that actually the stills are fine, but you can do so much more with the, with the moving image when it, when, you know, in this format. I've been going to Afghanistan since 1994, and I've got this very big archive, black and white material from Afghanistan, and some color. And um, I'm doing a multimedia thing again with uh, Media Storm in New York. They're producing the, the film. Um, and that's uh, probably going to be coming out in November. So it's being edited at the moment in New York. And that was the thing that I went back in last year, two years ago, to film. And that taught me how to use the camera. And then this is what came about. So the whole thing's going to be put out as a DVD with an extra track, which is, you know, the acoustic stuff that I shot of her playing the tracks. There's one continuous take of the track England, which is an extra track. Um, it's just her playing guitar, singing, singing England. And they, they, they had this sort of campaign, which was, it was, the, it was her manager, it was a fantastic idea that you, maybe a month before the album comes out, put out one of them. So um, it went out on The Guardian, I think, uh, website, and then after about a week, it became YouTube and other places. And they did that successfully with each track, until all 12 tracks were done. So they kept the interest in the album. Um, and then the f month was the first one, and then that ran for a month, and then the next one was like uh, the next one, and then they, three weeks, and then they reduced the, the time. And then the last one, I think the two tracks were put out in one week. Um, by that time, the album had been launched and you know, it had been reviewed and all the rest of it. Um, so they, they were put out as, I mean, I don't know, I don't really know the music film scene, but I think that's how, how music films are put out now, it's on, on YouTube and, and websites.